It's been said that Plato was the first to argue that necessity is the mother of invention. Uh, that is to say that brilliance may be born from inspiration, but that inspiration is born from force of circumstance. Now, far be it from me to challenge Plato, but he obviously never played this game. This is Metroid, and this game's development was not the result of necessity or need or any of the exigencies to which Plato seems to ascribe the act of invention. And make no mistake, this game's development certainly represented invention. You see, Nintendo didn't need to make Metroid. Before the very idea had even materialized, the company had already become the spearhead of a resurrection and subsequent golden age for video games. From 1981's Donkey Kong to 1985's Ice Climber and, of course, Super Mario Bros., the company's bright and colorful platform games were driving unprecedented growth in the exciting new field of home computer gaming, a field in which Nintendo was the undisputed leader. And that was a position it had reached by creating lively, colorful worlds populated by lively, colorful characters. And although you'll uncover many things within Metroid's dark and brooding caverns, not a single one of them is lively or colorful. Indeed, Metroid was unlike anything Nintendo had done before. A development experiment spawned both from the company's desire to offer contrast to the polychromatic pleasantries for which they were known, and to forge new boundaries of gameplay and objective. So, necessity? Eh, sorry Plato, but this is one case of invention with a very different mother. A mother brain. To just look at Metroid, it's easy to see very familiar conventions and assume that beneath them is a very familiar game. But there's much more to Metroid than shooting enemies and jumping on platforms. Those familiar actions are merely the vehicles for a far more intriguing experience based mostly on exploration, something virtually unheard of during that era. The game begins in the aftermath of an attack on a research vessel by the evil space pirates. They've stolen specimens of a deadly organism known as the Metroid, creatures the space pirates plan to mutate, replicate, and use to exterminate all who oppose them. The Galactic Federation has failed to recover the Metroids, and in a desperate last effort, it hires the galaxy's most feared and renowned bounty hunter for a recon mission. Her name is Samus Aran, and for this mission, she's on her own. And so are you, the player. You see, Metroid doesn't tell you where to go. It doesn't even tell you what to do. And unless you read the instruction manual, you'll have no idea that plot even exists. Metroid drops you into an enormous alien world in which you're alone, unequipped, and completely lost. But strange as it may sound, that's what makes Metroid so captivating. The game leaves you mesmerized by your adventure a quest which felt much more personal than most at the time because it unfolded at your discretion. Completing level 1 didn't take you to level 2, in fact there really were no levels. You went where you wanted, when you wanted, and at the pace you wanted. Another aspect of Metroid which was especially groundbreaking. So obviously Metroid is all about exploration, and although it can be a bit confusing and even frustrating at times, it works well for a few reasons. First, if you want to explore the planet Zebus, you need to platform, and that's something very few developers do as well as Nintendo, particularly during this time period. So the gameplay is polished and responsive, though the controls may feel a tad stiff compared to contemporary Metroid games. Secondly, and another area in which Metroid really helped break ground, is the feeling of empowerment it gives you. The game was one of the first to give the player the ability to find tools and weapons to permanently strengthen their character. And although Samus begins her mission with a scant arsenal, 
There are plenty of powerful upgrades hidden throughout Zebus. Upgrades which allow her to access locations of the foreboding planet she otherwise couldn't have. So your tireless exploration is actually incentivized, and that's excellent game design. Finally, the third reason this exploration-based gameplay works is the feeling of isolation the game creates. From its unearthly level layouts and creatures, to its unsettling art design and ambient music, Metroid is all about mood and tension, and they amplify both the feeling of discovery and the psychological impact inherent within such deep exploration of a place like Zebus. Metroid looks, sounds, and just feels alien. It still does to this day. And that's one of the reasons this game is so widely recognized as not only one of the finest of its time, but perhaps one of the most significant and influential of all time. Decades since we first visited these subterranean crypts where monsters cloaked by darkness crawl on the ceiling and harrowing screeches cry out in the distance, there's still something very unsettling about this desolate planet. And there's still something very powerful about Metroid. <laughs>